Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5 of our Hidden Strength podcast. This week we have Carly Cunningham in the hot seat. She is the best friend of the late, great Nikki Graham, who sadly lost her battle to anorexia in April this year. This conversation is so important to be had of how eating disorders can affect not only the person, but the immediate family and friends around you. So subscribe, like, share and enjoy this video. Do you feel like being in Greece, and obviously you weren't just with you, you were with some other girls, I think. Um, do you think them telling Nikki that she was poorly is what made her realise? Because obviously then you don't listen to family and friends, do you? Yeah. Do you know the thing with Nikki, she was so caring, so loving. Yeah. The Nikki outside of the illness, because the Nikki with the illness, the thing is with this illness, it, it can make you someone you're completely not, it just makes you almost like angry. Yeah. Um, and shout and scream and that's not really the real you no. but the Nikki behind the Nikki that wasn't the illness she's amazing just well that's why she, that's why I loved her for so so many years yeah, that's why the nation fell in love that's why the nation though. loved her right yeah, she's great she just didn't ha she's just such a good soul because I believe her in old souls and I feel like she was an old soul yeah. she was just like she just knew stuff and I feel like that's where we connected we just we just had an understanding and she was just I just loved her so much and um, I think, yeah, listening to my friends kind of, well, they were her friends as well, you know, they cared a lot about her and, yeah. you know, I think that did help to a degree because she, and I think her knowing she had good people around her, you know, her family and her friends, well, she had a solid, like there was a rock solid, like, she had network. a small, 100%. she had a small little rock, I feel. And yeah. I think that's really, I feel like in life, that's almost all you need sometimes 100%. just knowing you've got that little handful of people around you. But with this illness, I think sometimes it doesn't matter. It, it just, it takes hold of you. And it's almost like, you can just start to get better and then something will happen. And But she, she was, she kind of, because it's, it's, it's almost almost a bit of a blur, but she did, sign, she kind of did just kind of, it kind of evened out a little bit. And there's a say lockdown hit and she just became, she just got lonely. And even though, like. So she was living on her own through lockdown. She was. She's saying her mum sometimes, because her mum was in her bubble. Yep. But, you know, we'd still go and see her because we were all part of her bubble. Good. Uh, so we'd see her as much as we can. We'd go for walks in the park and, and you know, just... Because we you remember, if the lockdown, a lot of time it was really warm, so we'd get yeah. out and about. And So she wasn't always on her own, but it was more of just, like, you know, night time and when you wake up. The and, vulnerable times. Yeah, the times you're actually... That, that illness is, like, eating away at yeah, you. Yeah, I get it. And I think, gradually, she didn't mean to... It didn't mean to get that out of, out of hand, but with this illness, it's just... It, it's like almost like it can happen and all of a sudden before you know it, it's got really, really bad and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, now I don't know how to get out of it. Um, and then that's just when it came to the point where we were like, right, now I feel like now we really need to do something. And it was like, what do we do? Because in my opinion with the, um, and I know my friends felt like this, the, the level of help out there not just for eating disorders, but for mental health in general, but more so for eating disorders. It's not enough. It's so limited. There's not enough funding. There's not enough clinics. And it was just like, oh, like. Where do you put her kind of thing? She was admitted into a hospital. Yeah. She, quite a few times, but unfortunately they just, they just weren't able to do what so she was this needed. Under section, did you have to under section her? At one point we did. Yeah. Um, Hard to do? really hard yeah. because it made her angry and cross because she hated you for a minute she did for a minute but the nikki deep down knew why we were doing yeah, it's it the, it's the illness that hated you yeah it wasn't her no, like she knew she knew what we were doing she knew 100%. we just wanted her to be okay like i remember saying to her i said nicks you've been in my life 22 three years 23 years i said i want i want to be in each other's life for another 23 years i said because i will struggle without you because it's it's hard to it's hard in life to find that one true friend that no matter what you go through, you just know you, they're there in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and she's she's that one person for me. And I think, you know, that was the hard bit that I said to her, because I, I said it to her in the car one day, she rung me and I said, and she said, oh, I'll be all right. And I suppose looking back now, I was probably in denial because I thought she will be, she's so strong. She's got through so much, she's gonna do this. And yeah, I think it was probably my mum that said to me, you know, I'm worried, I'm seriously worried. And I was just like, she's strong. I didn't really say anything when she, my mum said that. I um, guess you've seen her up and down so many times. Yeah. You must have just been like, it's just another minute. Yeah, yeah, I just, um, yeah. And I think I always listened to her when she told me she'd be all right. But then there was one day when I went round there with, so, so the, another close friend of Nikki and mine, Leon. 
such an amazing guy, you know. Um, this is who you do the foundation with, right? This is who I did the foundation with. He was like another, he was like a brother to Nikki. He's now like a brother to me. Um, since losing Nikki, we've become extra close and I feel like I've gained a brother as amazing. well. Um, because he kind of just said to me, you know, we, we were saying to each other, right, what can we do? And he came up with the idea um, about doing a GoFundMe and at first we were like, oh, because this was Nikki, you so know, public, it was it? so public. So we had to be so careful. So obviously the first thing we did was talk to Nikki about it because we never would have done anything without her. So we said, what do you think, Nick? And she was kind of like, OK, I think she knew she needed the help and she yep. knew that this particular hospital she'd been in couldn't help her. And um, so we were just like, OK, let's do it. So we did get these pictures, which we thought could be quite triggering for people. But at the same time, I, I've got to be honest, we just was thinking about Nikki at the time. Let's just do this. Let's just raise this money. I think it's great that you put the pictures up because it was, although I get why you say it's a trigger, it's so shocking to see that that is what was underneath the clothes. You yeah. Know? I don't think it, you see that enough. Yeah. People often talk about anorexia yeah. and bulimia, but you don't actually see what it's doing to the body because I think people, again, it's a trigger. It is. But it needs to be, you need to see it. People need to see the yeah. state that, you, that these girls and boys get their bodies in. Yeah, because it's like they wear baggy clothes. Well, and when you say oh, somebody's died to anorexia, people kind of brush it off as in, how, like, how? Yeah. How does, how? How does someone die? Your body physically gives up because it's so malnourished. And yeah. it's important to show that. And I'm glad that you did do that. Yeah, well, I just, I think at the time it was, you know, there was also the worry of it kind of well yeah being triggering but also because we say this is so competitive with this illness yeah but we were like okay we're going to do it with the intention that we'd probably raise with family and friends and friends of friends ten thousand pound maybe i don't know i'm just putting a rough figure on it yeah of course just to start the treatment and then see what they could do wherever we might find at this point we didn't even know where we we're going we knew we had a hospital in mind which i'd been suggested from my hospital um because obviously the hospital i work in don't take adults so we had one in mind in, in London called the Nightingale. The Nightingale is where which, I was. Yeah, <laughs> which is so weird, right? So weird. But again, it, everyone just gets brought together. The best, might I add, the best place in the world. So weird. And I'm gutted you didn't get to go. And I think that's what, when, even when you say that, I, it's like someone's punched me in the stomach. I get it. And I want to just like, but yeah <laughs> I get it. so I get I feel like someone's just gone bam in my stomach because I, I just knew that the nightingale were going to be the right place it was a scary thing for Nikki right because they do they make you have things like puddings and like oh yeah it's like really intense. serious a bit like hunter them 100% but it's for adults you you, it has to be like that but obviously they're private so, so my treatment I think cost 70 grand for three which months. is like who has that money luckily my mum had private health care but if we didn't oh, I don't know where it'd be so. I'm so glad your mum had private health care. Oh, so am I. <laughs> and so I'm so I. glad that they helped you. Like, so am I. You deserve that help. And I just... It was luck of the draw, though. It was luck of the draw that they even pushed me through because it was so competitive to even get a space. Like, did you guys... Was there a waiting list and stuff? Like, <sighs> There was a waiting list of, like, five weeks. But we were like, OK... Is no, it's, there's too much time when you're in too much needs time. to be in there now. The doctor was amazing, the doctor yeah. I spoke to. She actually said, look, as soon as, if there's something comes available yeah. before, she was lovely. She they, was really lovely. I think, especially the private ones as well, because it is funded, like, you're, you're actually paying money there. I feel like they're a little bit more, like, they want to help a bit more. Yeah. That's just my per personal no, experience. Definitely. The NHS one, the whole world is wanting them, whereas Absolutely. the private ones, unfortunately, you've got money in this world, you've got access to anything. Yeah. But 95% of the population don't have it. <laughs> no, but, but this is the thing, right? So, even though we'd raised this money, we still couldn't get her private care. So sad. I mean, like, it's just just crazy, like, the, the lack of help out there I know. was just like, what? so we were coming home at night, every night we had this little WhatsApp group, myself, Leon, and some of our closest friends of Nikki's, um, and Nikki's mum, we mm. were all collecting together, and my mum, we were like that, and, um, really tight net you know and we were like bam bam trying this trying this ringing around this ringing around this you know speaking to this person so adding up front uh, prices and it and we were just like there's nowhere so some people said she was too low in bmi we can't help her because they don't do refeeding so refeeding How is, is that possible that she's too low surely that means she needs to be admitted 
Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's like they don't do refeeding because obviously refeeding syndrome is so dangerous. Like we we do that at Huntercombe. So the, is that the, like the tubes? Yeah, it is. It's well, it's kind of like. So they see a dietitian mm -hmm. and they'll do an exact amount that that person needs yeah. for their weight. So that, because it's quite dangerous, because you imagine if you've yeah, got really, course. really, really undernourished, underweight, of and course. your body's just everywhere, to then just put bam, 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 and eat like a normal person, yeah. you're going to go, your body's just going to go into shock almost. So it's about doing it in a really, really serious, well, like, um, cared for, you know, by nurses and the people that know what they're doing, really. I think when I was in, they, there were these drinks. Ensure. That's the ones. Yeah. It was those. And that was what, because oh. obviously, yeah, oh my God. But like loaded with calories and loaded with all the nutrition that you need when you are point blank refusing to eat yeah. the dinner that's been put in front of you. And yeah. I don't know what was worse, eating the dinner and going through the battle in your head. Yeah. Or, or trying to neck this horrible, horrible drink. meal in a bottle. It basically just feels like blended food. You know? Oh, girls, the girls at Huntercombe, they all, uh, some of them have that. But I think, do you know, go, like that, the whole Ensure thing, I think it's a strange one. I think it's almost like, and this is what I say to some of the girls, it's so scary for them to eat that food. Oh my God. Again, you'll understand this, yeah. as do I. Eating that food, you've got that food there in front of you, you're at the table and you're like, it looks, even though it's just a normal meal, you're like, it's Terrifying. the scariest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Because you, 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 you trained your mind to think that's the enemy, even though it's not, it's not the enemy. The yeah. enemy is something completely different. The enemy is what's got you into that place 100%. in the first place, whatever it might be. But you're looking at it and you're like, and then all of a sudden you've got a drink in front of you and it just feels like you're... It's so much. I think it's like, it's like the guilt of eating the food and then when the food's gone and the drink's there, you're like, this is less guilty, yeah. this feels less guilty. 100%. Does that make sense? And I then get you it. And, and do you know what? I think often, in my experience, the worst part wasn't getting the food down my neck. It was what came after that. It was yeah. then, because afterwards, you then have to go and sit in a room with, with a group of all of you. Supervision. And sit there for, I think it was for like, for, so for, it was different for snacks, it was shorter, but for dinner or breakfast or lunch, it was yeah. 45 minutes sat there, no phone, no TV, no books, no Just nothing. time Just to sit. sat there, like literally like this, you weren't allowed to, I couldn't sit like this, so I couldn't relax. I had to be sat up straight. Yeah. I had to feel that food digesting yeah. and sit with it yeah. and feel what that felt like. Yeah. And that, was the hardest part of the whole journey for me personally just having to get my head around digesting food yeah and not wanting to bring it back up yeah yeah because Awful. i suppose um have with bulimia it's almost mm. again it's an it's another type of feeling isn't it you've yeah. got that kind of want to kind of just get it out of your system and yeah it's like you need to do it now before the food kind of goes down too much oh 100 percent. which must be incredibly hard i mean i get it actually you know, I think almost bulimia does kind of come coincide with the uh, anorexia to a degree, you know, as not They're both similar, but yeah. they're both a little bit different. Like, yeah. because obviously with anorexia, you, there's no food going in you, whereas yeah. bulimia, you want the food in you to have the sensation of bringing it back up. Like yeah. you've just controlled that purge. Absolutely. You know? And you still enjoy the food, mm. but it's like, so you still want the enjoyment, but at the same time after that, you want to, you want to purge. And 100%. You, it's I often, horrific. and I do think that bulimia is more common. And it's more, yeah. it's more spoke about. Absolutely. Anorexia is something I think you can hide. It's quite hush-hush. It is. The girls, you know, right, when you're really, 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 really underweight as well, if you have a baggy jumper on and baggy trousers... You can't see nothing. You're not actually going to assume that person's... And, they've, and a lot of the time they're putting on a smile, which underneath they're hiding such sad yeah. emotions. And 100%. it's like you're not really seeing that because you're seeing this person that's chatting away in really baggy clothes and they're just being like anybody else, basically. It's not, you know, um, yeah, and it's it's tough. And I think, again, that's what lockdown did to a lot of people. A lot of the, uh, some of the girls that are coming now, they have, have, have really, sh it's been brought on by lockdown more so because it hit them so hard. You left your own devices. Absolutely. And the brain is the biggest enemy often sometimes. Yeah. And um, so I get it that. Just, it's, just, it's just so hard for people, I think. So back to Nick. The, the care, obviously, she didn't get in in time. Yeah. Do you, so what happened after that? She did, she went she went at home? Was it at home that she passed away? Um, yeah, so... Talk me through that, if you can. There's some things that I can't particularly go into because, you know, just because of legalities and it. just for her personal mm -hmm. reasons as well. But um, she kind of went off to somewhere. She went off somewhere um, and she 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 collapsed um i think as everyone probably knows she went into 
the hospital, the yep. general hospital. And we were like, brilliant. We were all so relieved, I if I'm honest is. with you. With the professionals. Oh, we were like, this Relying is Relying on them to save her. Good news. We, and um, her family, us, her friends, we were just so relieved. It was like, okay, the pressure's off. They're going to do what they're going to do. They did to a degree, but, um, you know, she she was in there a while. And I actually spoke to her, you know, I spoke to her on the phone a lot. And I think she was quite glad, relieved herself just to have someone looking after her yeah. that was medical, like medically trained and actually get her into a better place physically. Because that's the thing with eating disorders. You don't really know what it's doing to your insides, but until it's almost too late, like it literally can f mess up everything. Your electrolytes, your, you know, your... Um, all the functions going on in the body, the kidneys, the liver, everything, the heart, it's all pumping harder Putting to try your body and... body under so much stress. Well, so much stress. I've told you before with an old camera, I'm still struggling with body problems, with like bowel problems and digestive problems, just because, and the doctors don't know how what it's going on with me, and I, I, we think it might be down to the fact where I used to have to force myself to be sick so much, and it's not a normal bodily function, is it? So I Jess, get you that. need to get that sorted. Yeah, I know. I will. I think it's more to do with the point that you just don't, we don't want to know what damage you've done from your previous experience. No, absolutely. This is, of course, of course, it's scary for you. Really scary. It's scary, but I think sometimes it, that can even be down to anxiety of the mm -hmm. worry of it to the point where you're like... Do you think that that was something that Nick ever worried about? Did she worry about the health damages or do you think she was so lost in the illness? <sighs> I think she did. Yeah. I think she did. She did say to me, and Leon actually, she did say, you know, I'm feeling really unwell kind of thing. So I think that was the relief of her being in this hospital. Yeah, of course. That they were going to make her feel better. And she, I think they did to a degree. But, yeah, the sad bit was that they let her go home. And, you know, the letting, the letting her go home, none of us could understand because it's like, well, why are you letting her go home? Mm -hmm. Again, there's other things that kind of went on, that, you know, but it's just, it's just so hard. I mean... I spoke to her the night before, and um, I was going. I was going to see her that weekend. I was at work actually. I'd been at work that day, and I was at work the next day. And then I was going to go over and see her at the weekend. And I spoke to her on the phone, and she said, "You know, it's hard." I think she was pleased because she loved her little place. Yeah. You know, it's like having your home comforts. It's oh, still a relief, God, isn't I know. it? Yeah. And uh, she was so relieved to be in her own home comforts, but I think she felt really rough. And yeah, I spoke to her. We just said, "Love you." You know, just our normal combos said, I'll, I'll call, talk to you tomorrow and then she I'll see you at the weekend. Spirits. She seemed all right. She, she seemed tired, but I think you would. That illness oh, makes you exhausted. Absolutely. Um, but not a, at any point in my life did I think that would be like the last time I spoke to her. I thought, yeah, I'll just see her this weekend kind of thing. And I always checked her Facebook to make sure she'd been online and stuff. And the next morning I was, I was busy working. I was actually with a patient and I checked my Facebook and she, I think she'd been online I was like brilliant but I don't know what it was something felt weird that day and then I got the call and I I, I was like I'm gonna have to go outside I thought maybe she just was a bit unwell or something yeah. but something I don't know this is where I felt like we had such a strong connection you, Nick you and know I know when things are wrong didn't you that something it's felt weird. for that moment something mm -hmm. felt really really bad and I just kind of walked out and I left the other staff member in in there and I was just like and I just at first it was yeah it I, it was just the worst day of my life, of literally. So, and um, I, I was in disbelief because I don't know. I, d I guess that's the losing of someone. I've not ever lost anyone since I was a little girl, and I lost my nan, and that was yeah. actually I got ill then when I lost my nan. That was one of the reasons I got ill because she was just such an amazing woman. My mum's mum. Grief is an awful, awful. It's, oh, oh, it's an awful emotion to feel. I, f I don't think I've ever felt grief no. since I was like seven. And you're never seven. ready for it. It's weird when they say that, isn't it? When yeah. you're not ready for grief, because I really was not ready for this kind of grief, um, as were her family and her other friends. So I think our whole lives just completely change in the space of like a second. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I think you're incredibly strong right now for, for what you've been going through. I think you've, it looks like you've, you've just sort of not taking it on the chin, but you know, you're, you're doing it for her. Yeah. I feel like you, maybe that might be the driving force behind you that you know, you, you can, you've got the ability now to make a difference with the foundation that you're doing for her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I felt like, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, that I think we all, you all grieve in different ways and, you know, I just wanted to shut the whole world out, um, which I did do actually. But then, you know what it was, I thought, oh no, I've got to go back and help. I've got to go back to my job 
and I want to help these girls. Make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else. Absolutely, I want to make sure this doesn't, and Nikki would have wanted that. Nikki would have screamed at me if I'd just completely given up. Good. Or anyone close to her, like really, really close to her that she really loved. She would have been like, I can hear her. <laughs> uh, that's what keeps me going. Well, um, you sound so much so similar. <laughs> Everyone always says yeah, that. If I close my eyes, I'm like, oh my God, I feel like Nikki is sat in front of me. You literally <laughs> sound identical. Like. So many people say that throughout the years. They're like, you two sisters. We're like, yeah, yeah we're sisters. Basically, we basically are. We, I feel like we were born. <laughs> we're just born from different mums, but we were kind of born. There was definitely something in the heavens that sent us down and they went, they're that. connected. I have friends That's like that. that. You were meant to meet each other. Yeah, and we're like, and you two, as in me and her, don't have a choice in this. No. <laughs> we always got gr brought back together. And I think that's what keeps me going is, um, it, it is almost like sometimes I have to just not think about it too much at, at, that's kind of where I'm at at the minute but then I'll have my moments where I just sit and think and then I kind of have to just stop because I just I have to just try and stay strong and I think all of us in her little circle have to try and stay strong now um I feel like that's the way that you try and get through it I don't you've know each other to get yeah you through it. you've got each other and it really does help having people around you that are also going through the same feelings that miss her dearly mm -hmm. and that are understanding and you know you're having that that cry on your own and whatnot is very helpful as well. I think the scary bit about for me is is the not the not seeing her like yeah. that's the bit I'm struggling with. It's that. the not like knowing I'm going to see her again. That's the bit I haven't come to ter I can't come to terms with. I don't think you ever will. No, I, mean, I think that's what grief is. I wanted her to be my bridesmaid. I wanted her to be the the godmother of my child one day I wanted her to be I always had her as the person you know at my birthdays her birthdays if she got married it was her it that was, you did it with yeah and you know uh, her, who I'd have the argument with her 100%. who I'd tell my stuff to who'd be bridezilla with who I yeah exactly <laughs> and she'd probably be like Carly I'm not wearing this dress <laughs> And I'd be like, okay, wear what you want, Nick. That would have been a biggest battle for it you It would have. She'd be like, Carly, why are you dressing me in this dress? And I'd be like, okay, Nick, so you wear what you want to wear. It's those sort of things that I'm never going to have that with any... This, this, and I've got very good friends. There's some friends, you know, I've got a couple of really good friends that I adore, but there's just never going to be my Nikki. And there's, she was my ultimate soulmate. And I feel like I've lost the you know like when you meet someone and they f you're, f you're, you're forever without yeah. the funny business yeah of course that's what I feel like I've lost and it's like part of my heart has fallen out now and that isn't going to come back but I feel like now between like, Leon as well and and our other friends and family we want to just build something for her amazing to keep her name going because she was so loved by so many people mm -hmm. so to keep her name going at the same time um you know, she would have wanted to help people. Anyone you meet or anyone that messages, like you sometimes get some messages from people saying, oh, Nikki would hug me, so someone's suffering with the honest. And she would just be so lovely to that person. And she would have wanted to go and help people. Yeah. But I think where she was so poorly at the time, she couldn't. But if she'd have got well, she would have done that eventually. Yeah. So now I feel like we are going to do that for her. Good. And hopefully, and I'm very spiritual and I believe I can feel her there. She's around That's what I'm us. Saying. She's, you're never leaving now, you know. She's there more than ever now. Exactly. And I, everything I do, I'm like, oh God, I hope she's not watching. Or like, and I know she's not with me all the time because she'll be with like her other family and friends. But when she, if I do feel her there, I'm like, oh, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? What would she say? What would she do? Is she shouting at me? Is she you're doing laughing? Incredible, you're doing everything right. Whatever makes you feel like you're coping with it is the right thing to do. Don't let anybody tell you that you're grieving wrong. You yeah. Know? Whatever makes you feel better about the situation is what you should push forward with. Absolutely. So tell me about the foundations that you're with. I know the one that's called Platinum. There's your one. Talk yeah. to me about those. What's so the projection? with the GoFundMe money, we, we decided how can we turn this into a positive Yeah. Um, so we offered everyone to have a refund and it, for anyone that didn't want a refund we was going to put we was going to build a trust for nikki in the name of nikki the nikki graham trust at the minute we're kind of toying with where we're going to go but it's going to be of something of that sort but it's going to be going to charities that we're going to be working with amazing um so we've got first of all we've got caroline who are an uh, absolutely amazing eating disorders charity um it's run by two ladies. Well, it's run by a collection of people, but particularly two ladies that we've chatted with, and they 
they're just amazing. They're highly trained in what they do. Amazing. And I couldn't think of a better charity to donate to and, and work alongside. Um, a friend of ours that's, in, it's, that's doing this with us, Jodie, she knows them very well, so we trust them. And So that's Caroline. Then we're working with Seed, mm -hmm. uh, run by Gemma Roten um, and her f wonderful family. Uh, Gemma suffered with um, an eating disorder at the same time as Nikki and I. Wow. Gemma's also... Um, God, it's so common. So common. And she's already actually in the public eye herself. So Amazing. she's you know, been doing so much. So, I can't tell you what that girl does. She yeah. is incredible. And she met Nikki at some parties that were, you know, before in the past. And I feel like you know, we've built a very good friendship with Gemma now, and um, she's just an amazing woman. What she's doing with her charity and her family are doing, they've, they've had this charity, oh, I want to say 20 years. I, wow. I don't know if I'm wrong there, yeah. um, but she's had it many, many years, and they work so hard, her mum and dad. And it's so lovely because it's a family-based yeah, charity. Yeah, that's amazing. But they just, they're just not getting given the funding. So anyway, we're going to work alongside them. We're going to do more campaigning to help them. Mm -hmm. And then there's Frida from my work mm -hmm. at Huntercombe. And because Nikki and I were both in that hospital, um, and I kind of, there. there is. Mm -hmm. And that place for me is, they're amazing really. Although there's not enough help out there, what Huntercombe do do is great. I mean, they're saving these girls' lives every day. And what Frida does. And their babies. Oh, absolutely, they're babies. And you know this job for Frida, right? She's, she's the head nurse and she, I don't, you bar she barely has a day off. She yeah. has like a day off, and when she does have a day off, you're like, "Where's Frida?" Yeah, and everyone's like, "Yeah, I bet she's, she's on at her home day off. waiting to come yeah. back to work." <laughs> Even then, she'll be in contact with you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, she's incredible, and she's building a, a business called Platinum Healthcare. Amazing for people aged 12 to 60, and it's for people that oh, wow, are, so the whole spectrum of age. The whole spectrum of ages. Wow, she's going to be so busy. She is, <laughs> and I think through Nikki, we just want to kind of help her a little bit. So we're helping her a little bit and in any way we can. And I want to I wanna eventually help her with her business as well. And she, it will be kind of targeting people with, so with eating disorders, but that aren't in hospital. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a case of going to their house, helping them with meal support, helping the families with the support. And actually, you know, like just going there and helping that person before, either before they've gone into hospital or actually really when they've come out of hospital and they still need that aftercare mm -hmm. or just to stop someone going into hospital, to catch it before it gets to the point where, Amazing. God forbid, they have a heart attack or, you know, and, and actually help them with the eating side of things and, and, the, and the mental health side of things as well. So that's Frida's business. Um, so yeah, they're the three, they're the three Amazing. charities and business that we're helping. So hopefully, you know, we can make a little bit of a change and eventually we'd like to make a massive change. I think the hard thing is, is the, we're doing this because we've lost, it's taken yeah. to lose, to lose my absolute to, yeah. world favorite person in the world. Um, to losing her to, 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 to try and make some change but at the same time I know she would have wanted there to be change because of what happened to her so and if we just sat around and actually sitting around for me and doing nothing I'm constantly thinking about it now and I know Leon is and our other friends and her family. I think doing this is going to help you heal I think it will because you're putting Hopefully. your energy into something that that she would have wanted you to do. Yeah. A hundred percent. Just to try and just to try and help you know people out there not just the people suffering yeah but their families too because they're also going through horrific 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 times yeah. well I guess I think you just you don't want anybody to experience the pain that you're feeling ever in yeah. their life because that Absolutely. is some, like something you never expect to lose a friend do you and I don't think in any sense of the world you're never ready for that how are you ever ready to lose a friend my mum lost her best friend and it was the hardest thing we've ever been through as a family ever so I I can massively relate to how you're feeling because I've watched my mum go through it and I still am convinced that part of her died with her. And I guess that's how you feel, right? Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a really, that's a really, that's the right way to put it. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like as soon as, she, the minute I realised she was gone, I felt like, I felt like it was like someone had ripped off my a limb and I'm never gonna have that limb back. And I felt like a part of me kind of just went with her because I knew life like was never going to be the same again without her in it because 
it, it's such a, she was she's such a missing gap now in oh all of God, our lives. I can't even imagine. In her family and ours. She was such a powerhouse, you know. I can't even imagine how that feels to have taken away from you. Yeah, it's just unex it's, 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 it's unexplainable, really. I don't think I couldn't even put, uh, to be honest, I don't have words yeah. to actually say really how I feel or any of us feel that we're really close to her because there's, there's, no, there's no words, really. It's just, well, just a massive loss. I think what you're doing loss. is amazing because it's going to hopefully stop other people experiencing what that feels like. I hope so. So what we end on every time is, what would you tell your younger self? Is there anything that you, if you could go back when you were younger or the, what you, any advice that you tell the young girls that you work with, how to sort of navigate the world and not maybe get caught up in an illness like anorexia? Do you know, it's really weird, like, it's that, that's, that's that thing that everyone uses and I'm actually a massive believer in it, the being kind. Yeah. Being kind to yourself is so, so important. Not letting anything else out of your because I like that term now bubble of the people that you know really really close to do not listen to anything anyone says to you C care about yourself be kind to yourself I know it's not easy to always easy to love yourself but if you can really try, try and love yourself and and know that you know that, that that going down that road of an eating disorder isn't the way forward from experience I've been there I've been through the road. I've seen people around me go through that torment. And it's, it's so horrific. And if you can, just, just try and, nip, and I know it sounds easy, easier said than done, nip it in the bud before it gets too far. Please do. And yeah, most, just most importantly, be kind to yourself and, and just listen to the advice that people are giving to you. And if you are ever struggling, you know, go and, go and talk to a doctor you know, try and talk, or talk to a loved one or talk to a friend. If you can't talk to someone yeah. super close to you, there's always someone there to talk to. And just reach out because I think talking is the most important thing if you are ever struggling with an eating disorder or mental health. I always say to the girls at the hospital, please talk. You just learn to trust that person. If it's one person, just talk. And um, yeah, just, just be kind to yourself. Well, thank you so much for talking. I know this has probably been hard and you don't, you're not doing a lot of this kind of stuff no. either. So. I appreciate you so much. I can't even tell you how important this one was for me. And I, f I hope whoever watches it, really, it does help. And like I know it will. So thank you for your time. Oh, that's fine, Jess. You're welcome. Guys, I'm going to put all the links up to all of the foundations that Carly's involved with. Also, share, subscribe, get this out to the masses. And big love to everybody.